Welcome to my video about neural nets. I'm going to give you today a brief introduction how the mathematics behind neural nets work. Therefore, there will be no further explanations what you can do with a neural network. Let's start with some technical terms. The basic unit of every neural net are the neurons or also called nodes like you can see here. These nodes are connected by so-called connections and what they do, they connect the output of one neuron to the input of another neuron. In this sense, every connector can also be weighted with different weights B. A block of nodes is also called a layer. Neural networks have different types of layers. First, input layers when no computation is done. They just pass the information to the next layers, in this case the hidden layer, and normally always to the hidden layer. In, in the hidden layer, um, intermediate processing and computation is done. So they perform computations and then transfer the weights um, from the input layer to the following layer, which can be another hidden layer or in our case an output layer. And here we finally use in most of the cases an activation function to map um, the desired output in the format we want. But we also can take the raw output. Normally the first thing after setting the layout or the architecture of a network is it's trained to set the weights for the different connections. After a network is trained, you can ask it like an oracle, here for example, what happens if I have an input x1 and the input x2, what is my output? To be more concrete, here an example, if my input x1 is 1 and my input x2 is 0, the output of my neural net will be 3. Another example, if my x1 is 3 and my x2 is 1, the output of my network will be 14.53. And now we are going to take a closer look at this network and answer the question, how is the input and the output related to each other? But before we start to go more into detail for this net, let's start with a simpler one. This neural net only has two input nodes, one hidden layer consisting of one hidden node and one output node. Taking now a more mathematical look at the network, let it look a bit different. You can see here that actually every node except of the input nodes has a sum of all inputs before and afterwards the output normally has an activation function or another function that is bound to it. This means every time you see the sign of a node, you always can assume that first the sum is taken of the inputs and after the node, the sum is built, um, a function is applied to this sum. And this value then is passed to the next layer always normally with a weight. Doing an example, in this case, so if I want to calculate h1, I need to take the sum of the product of x1 times the weight 1 and x2 times weight 2. And to obtain in the next step my output y here, I need to apply an activation function or a defined function from the value h1. In this case, I take a simple function that takes as an input h1, so the sum that we calculated before, and squares it. As a short note, as I already mentioned in the beginning of the video, the output layer normally also have an activation function or function, but for this case, we just keep our focus on the hidden neuron for you for better understanding. Let's take a look at an example. 
take a bit of time and calculate value h1. So let's take a look at it together. If you take x1 times w1 plus x2 times w2, you probably should get the value of 8. And in the next step, let's calculate the output of this neural net. Yeah, this shouldn't take too long. You just take 8 and square it, which is 64. I hope now you have a better view on how neural nets work or especially here for this example how the inputs and the outputs of single neurons in hidden layers or also an output layer are processed and we can now jump back to our starting example and see if you understood how it worked as you can see the more nodes a layer or a neural net has the more complicated it gets we have here a fully connected network, which means that every node is connected to every node in the next layer. Looking here at our input layer and our hidden layer, it means that X1 is connected to every hidden node and X2 as well, and this with different weights. So like you can see here, v11 and w21 are connecting um, x1 and x2 to h1 and the same for h2 and h3 to keep this case still simple the weights from the hidden layer to our output layer are all set to 1 what we need to do now is to calculate in the first instance h1 h2 and h3 apply the functions of the neurons build the sum of h1 h2 and h3 as an input for y and then take this value and apply our activation function for this neuron mathematically it looks like the following in the first instance, like I said, we need to calculate H1, H2 and H3. And this is the matrix product of X1 and X2 and the matrix consisting out of all of our weights. You can scale this up later on to bigger and much bigger networks. If this is done, we can calculate our Y. What we have to do here is that we have our activation function f and we need to apply it to each calculated h and afterwards perform a matrix multiplication with the vector 1 1 1 because our weights like i said before are all one what you can see here this matrix multiplication is nothing else than just the sum of all products Afterwards, we calculate the real output of the network because here we have, like I said before, an activation function in the output node as well, which is G from Y. So to get the whole output of the network, we need to take the calculated Y and calculate it in the function G. So the whole term looks like we have a function G, which we apply um to the function f from the vector h with the matter multiplication of the weights which are all one here coming back now to our beginning example where we had as an input three for x1 and one for x2 and now that the weights are given let's see how the output is calculated what we learn now is to get h1, h2 and h3, we need to take the sum of the products. So for h1, this means I need to take three times two plus one times three, which is nine. I need to do the same for h2, three times one plus one times five, four, which is nine, uh, seven, sorry. And 
the last one 3 times 2 plus 1 times 3 which is also 9. You can see here the function stays a squared function for this example so we have for h1 the output is 9 times 9 which is 81 for h2 7 times 7 which is 49 and one time again 9 times 9 which is 81. What we need to do now in the next step is we need to take the sum of the products due to our weights are 1 so it's 81 times 1 plus 49 times 1 plus 81 times 1 which is 211 and for this case we have another activation function for the output layer is that we take the root the square root so the output of our layer is the square root of 211 which is 14.53. I hope this video gave you a nice um, input about how the basic mathematics work behind neural nets and you understand a bit better that it's not magic what's happening, it's only math.